Hello everyone and welcome to another Lens Studio tutorial. In this video we are going to learn how to make a 3D model of the solar system. One thing I want to note right away is that this model isn't going to be entirely scientifically accurate, meaning uh, I'm really more going for a lens that looks good instead of one that is to scale. Um, if we made this to scale the sun would probably take up the entire screen or if it didn't take up the entire screen then we wouldn't be able to see any of the other planets uh, relative to the sun. Also this whole thing would be plummeting throughout space like a big vortex and uh, that doesn't make for a very good lens does it? So let's get started. This may seem like a really complicated lens to make because it's kind of like a VR lens but everything is actually available for free either built in within Lens Studio or online. So we'll just start a new project here. Always make sure you save your stuff, by the way. Alright, so we're just going to switch to the back camera because we know that is where the camera is going to open. And in order to do that, we'll go to the project info and for lens works on, we're going to select only rear camera. That means that it's only going to open up on the rear camera and we can still kind of have that uh, VR feel when we're walking around in space literally. So all of the textures that I'm using in this lens are actually available for free on solarsystemscope.com. Now they made every single planet in the solar system's texture mapped to a sphere, a 3D sphere. So all you have to do is download each of these textures. You're going to also want to make sure that you compress the textures so that they all fit within the 4 megabyte limit for each lens. So once you download everything and compress them, then what we can do is we can load them in. I've already done that to save some time. So we're going to just load all of these into Lens Studio here. And all we need to do first is create a sphere, a mesh sphere. So you'll see if we switch to video mode that the sphere is actually not in AR space. It's just fixed right in front of the camera. To fix that, we're going to go to our camera and we're going to click Add Component and we're going to add a device tracking component and we're going to make it to surface tracking mode so now you'll see it's actually stuck within AR no matter where you move the camera this is where now we can kind of size the sphere up and move it around to where we want it to go like if we wanted to go higher here let's just go back down to zero so what we're going to do actually is we're going to scale this up to about a hundred and then that's going to give us the illusion that we are in this big spherical solar system space. So right now, it doesn't look like anything's changed except the sphere seems to have disappeared. Uh, this is because there's no material, so we need to add a new material in here. And we're going to add a diffuse material. And then what we're going to do inside this ma diffuse material is change the texture. So let's make the texture space. That's going to be the base one. and. Again, nothing's happening right now because two-sided isn't checked. This means that we can see it on both the inside and the outside. So now that two-sided is checked, we're going to apply this to the sphere. So we're just going to choose the diffuse material. We are inside the sphere now. So it kind of looks like we're actually in space. Um, I'm just going to rename this space just so that we know what we're looking at and then I'm also going to add an empty scene object just call this solar system this is gonna be where we put all of our space objects so now that we have our diffuse we're gonna rename this to space just so that we have everything organized and we don't need these default textures so let's delete that um, let's call this oh yeah space material I guess and let's try organizing all of this just to keep everything in the proper place. So let's call this materials or just mats. We'll drop that space material in there. We'll make another folder and call it. Oops, that went in there. We'll make this folder textures. So that's where we can keep all of our images and our camera textures as well. All right. So now let's uh, let's make the sun. So really what we could do is just add another sphere inside this solar system object. Okay, so we have that right there. Let's make a new material for that. So let's just duplicate this and we're going to call this sun. And then let's just change the texture. So now let's find our sun texture, add that in there. 
And then we'll go to this new sphere that we did, rename that sun as well. And then let's pick that material. Okay, so now we have our sun. Let's size it up a bit. Let's try like 25. Okay, that's way too big. Let's um let's go with 10. Or let's go 15. Okay. Still too big. Uh, let's just go with five then. Let's see what five looks like. Okay. So now you'll see that there's kind of this weird mapping. Uh, it's kind of like a checkerboard pattern almost. Uh, so let's check that out and see what's going on. Um, you know what? It's the normal map. We need to take the normal map off of this because really all we need is this base texture. And let's make sure that we have that done as well for the space material. There we go. It doesn't really mean as much there but make sure that normal map is unchecked okay so we have our Sun here let's move that up a bit so that it is kind of in the in front yeah like that and now we're gonna begin rotating the object so then the kind of the Sun maybe rotates a little bit to make it look a little bit more alive so let's go and we'll use tweens to do this so we're gonna go down to the helper scripts click tween manager and then we're just going to delete everything under that tween manager and as well in the resources delete those example resources okay so then let's move our tween manager up to the top of the scene just so that it renders first always want to make sure that this one is up on top and then we're going to add a new empty child object under that we're going to call this rotation tweens and this is where we're going to add our Tween transform script. So we're going to add that in there. We're going to call this rotate sun. And then let's choose a loop type of loop. We're going to choose rotate. And the movement type is going to be offset. And then we're going to make sure that the offset additive is checked so that it just keeps on going. And then let's try making this five. Now it's going to be rotating five degrees and offset. So we need to select the scene object. So we're gonna go into solar system, click sun. And now you'll see it's very slowly rotating on the Y axis, but it's kind of going too slow. So let's make it go a little faster on the Y axis. There we go, that's a little better. Oh, but look at that. It's actually, it's not going uniformly. And that's because the easing function is quadratic. And you know, if we're moving from one point to another, that usually is the best one to use, but because this is going to be offsetting and looping, let's just change it to linear. There, so that's a much more smooth rotation. And then maybe we want to do a little bit on the X value as well. So now it's kind of rotating down and to the left. One thing to note is that uh, the planets in the solar system rotate around the sun counterclockwise. So we'll want these numbers to be positive when they are rotating. So we now have our rotating sun that is going to be the center of our space scene. Now we can continue adding some different planets. So let's just copy the sun here, or duplicate that, and let's just go with Earth. Even though the Earth is the third rock from the Sun, we're going to just do it first. So let's take that Earth, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to actually add another empty scene object under the Solar System object. We're going to call this Earth as well. And we're going to drag the Earth object inside there. And the reason that we are doing this is that we're going to want to make sure that this scene object is going to be the same position as the Sun. So let's just re-put this at 50 Y value. And then let's make sure that this Earth object is also up at 50. Okay. And then we're going to want to move this back down to zero then. And then let's move this actual Earth object to the left. Like that. You know what? Actually, let's move it to the left this way. There we go. So now let's change this and make it the Earth. So let's just duplicate that sun material. Call this one Earth. Change that texture. Where is Earth? Here we go. Okay, and then let's change that material in here. All right, let's maybe make this a little smaller so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now we have Earth 
let's make Earth start rotating the same way. So let's just copy this tween transform, paste it, and let's just change it to rotate Earth, and then change this. I'm gonna pick this mesh object. So now the Earth is rotating the same way. Let's uh, let's make it rotate differently so that it looks cooler. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And then maybe let's change this to like 15. Yeah, that looks better. Maybe even more like 60, because, you know. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so now we have both of these rotating on their own axes, but we want the Earth to actually rotate both on its own axis and rotate around the sun. So there's a couple ways we can do this. One way we can do this is adding a tween transform here. And this is the reason that I have this Earth with the parent object set at the zero position of the sun and then with the actual Earth object kind of offset away from that because we're going to be rotating this parent object which is basically with its origin at the sun. So we have a new tween, let's call this Earth Sun just I guess to kind of tell me that it's the Earth relative to the sun. So then we're going to pick the Earth ob oh I see so this Earth actually is yeah it needs to be under that so then we're going to pick the Earth object here that's a little weird we're gonna make sure that's at rotate and again going to from offset let's try 80 additive loop linear oops not quadratic linear Look at that, now it's rotating around the sun as well. If we wanted to make it go slower, we could just put it down to 60. And it's also looking kind of big. Let's uh, let's size that down just back to one. Maybe a little bit too small now. Let's go 1.5. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So yeah, now we have it rotating around the sun. And now we can just kind of do the same thing for the rest of the planets. Um, let's go with the moon for the Earth. So let's just uh, recreate this Earth here. Let's duplicate that. Rename it Moon. Again, we're going to just duplicate a material here. Rename it. And then change the texture. Moon. There we go. Okay, let's attach that moon material. All right, let's make the moon much smaller, maybe like a 0.4. And then we're gonna also want to make sure that we have, just like this Earth is a child object of the solar system, we're going to make the moon a child object of the Earth object. So we're gonna have this centered moon. And we're gonna put that under that. We're gonna make sure that this object is actually centered where the moon, or where the Earth is centered, so that's going to be, let's put it negative 67. Same here, negative 67. And then let's make the moon adjusting here. Let's actually move it out this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have the moon right there. And then let's just add another tween object for that moon. We can just copy this Earth one, probably. And then rename it Moon Earth. Then choose that moon object here. Now let's see. Let's try... Oh yeah, let's make this a little smaller. If we want to make it go faster, what we can do is just make the time less. So let's do 0.5 instead. Yeah, maybe less, like... Oh yeah, that's really fast. Okay, so maybe like 0.3. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty cool. Okay. Alright, so now we have the basis of the rotation uh, with the planets, and there's another way that we can actually make this stuff rotate around instead of using tweens, and this is gonna kinda get a little bit into coding but we're actually not going to be creating any code ourselves. Everything is available on the Lens Studio website. So what we're going to use is quaternion rotations. Now quaternions are commonly used in 3D software or game development to kind of 
code out where a object will rotate. I won't go too far into quaternion rotations. Um, I would suggest if you want to learn more about the math behind quaternion rotations, what you can do is check out a YouTube channel by the name of Jorge Rodriguez, and I will put the link in the description below. So let's get started by looking on the Lens Studio website. So let's just go to lensstudio.snapchat.com and we're going to search quat. And then in the API quat here, representing a quaternion. So all we're going to do actually, if you want to look through the API and learn some of the functions, lerp is a great one to use if you want to go from one rotation to another or position to another. Here, this is so this is what we're going to need. We're actually just going to copy this entire code snippet because it is the exact code that we need. And then we're going to add a script here. We're just going to call this rotate. And then we're going to copy everything in here. So let's go through what this script does. It's first going to input a scene object and we will see this if we just add an empty one here. Let's call this rotate gonna add this script in here and it's gonna take in a scene object let's um let's make a new one so let's let's put in uh, Jupiter I guess so we'll just uh, create another empty object here call this Jupiter put this under the solar system again make sure that it is at the exact same position as the Sun which is 50 Y Okay, and then under here we're going to create another mesh sphere. We're going to move that outward from the offset. Like right there. And let's add a new material here. Okay, and then let's assign that material. Cool. So now we have this object ready. Let's scale it up a bunch. Jupiter's pretty big, I think. Let's make it like a three. Yeah, that's good. Okay. We have Jupiter. Now we need to rotate it with the quaternion. So what this is doing is it's going to take in that scene object. Then we're going to specify how many degrees we want it to rotate every single frame basically and what this get delta time is doing is it's calculating the amount of time that's passed between frames and this kind of helps normalize across different devices so that they all kind of have the same speed and it's uh, frame rate independent so we'll just leave that how it is it's converting the degrees to radians so that it will work within the code then it's choosing which axis is rotating around right now it's vector 3 dot up which is the y axis exactly what we need it's going to pick the rotation that we need by using the angle axis method and it's specifying these radians that we have converted and also the axis so then it's going to take the old rotation of the object and then it's going to use that to make a new rotation basically it's going to say this next frame is going to be this rotation and then it's going to tell the object to rotate right there so let's pick this Jupiter object and then let's make this make sure that this is happening every single frame so we'll just select frame updated and there we have it now it's rotating this is working the exact same way that we did the tweening for the earth and the moon so we could also even just add another axis rotation in here let's just uh, pick this one and let's paste it instead let's call it rotate Jupiter Let's pick, make sure we're picking the Jupiter mesh, and we should probably name that just for clarity. Yeah, so now that we have that Jupiter mesh, let's rotate it a ton on the uh, Y axis. There it goes, look at that. So that is how you create a solar system, and if you want to, I'm not going to go through every single planet, uh, that's kind of up to you if you want to tweak it and add you know the rest of the planets again all you have to do is go to solarsystemscope.com and download all the textures compress them and bring them into your platform you could even use the earth night map instead of the earth day map 
Um, one other thing that you could do, uh, let's first save this project. Always save your project. We'll just call this SS for Solar System. And then we'll, what you'll notice is that there isn't any really moving stars like there was in the beginning. And this is another thing that's built within Lens Studio. So we're gonna go into Open Project from Template. We're gonna go to 3D and we're gonna pick Particles. We're gonna go to the Particle Template here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a specific particle. It's gonna be this one right here. I don't know how to pronounce it, Bokeh? Bokeh? I'm Minnesotan, so it's like a Bokeh, yeah? Let's get the Bokeh here. Yeah, sure, and then uh, we're gonna export that. It's gonna call the, whatever it's pronounced. So now we have that particle in here. We just exported it, and we see in the desktop it's ready to go. So then let's go back into our project, SS. Don't need to save the template. And then let's just drag that into our scene here. Okay, so now we have these objects here. Let's enable them. And it's really just as easy as that. You just drag them right into the solar system, and there they are. If you want, you can make it so that there's less of them by taking the intensity down. Yeah, maybe a little bit more subtle feel to it. You could even go as far as to edit the materials for these as well. So this is where we can kind of adjust if we want it to be like smaller size, or if we want them to move around or like have a different color. So really customization is up to you so yeah that is basically how you can make a solar system guys so if there's anything that you're still confused about or anything I didn't explain properly just uh, leave a comment below and ask me and I'd be happy to help you out um, obviously I didn't build the entire solar system but that would take a little bit more time and uh, I think I covered basically everything you would need to do in here so I hope you enjoyed and I would love to see your model of the solar system have a good day, everyone.